All right, we're back on this 2012 Ford. The hell the name of this thing? Focus. And on the air conditioning. So as you can see, there's no gauges, but there's all Bluetooth sensors. And so I have this refrigerant section line, so I know the temperature of the refrigerant coming out of the expansion valve from the evaporator. I have the liquid line coming right out of the condenser, so I know the subcooling. This will give me my superheat, low side pressure temperature, Bluetooth connected, high side pressure temperature, uh, pressure, air inlet coming from the grill. Usually I'd stick them inside, but I'm not doing a diagnosis right now. I'm just doing a test because uh, a broken line from the last two videos, there was two videos before this. This line was broken for two years open to the atmosphere, so the system is saturated with moisture. The oil is just laden with a massive amount of moisture in it. Could not be removed. There's your Bluetooth sensor taking your dash temperature. Now remember that's a 12 inch probe, so it's taking the temperature deep down in the duct, not at the surface. Infrared IR guns suck for taking temperatures. Don't use them. There is a way to use them but you have to be explained how to use them correctly. Otherwise, you'll get some really cold temperatures that are not real. Uh, that's a topic for another video, and I've done that a video in the past, showing infrared uh, IR guns taking temperatures out of duct dash or totally false temperature readings. Um, so here we go. We have a cold morning. Since I started this earlier this morning and was sitting on a vacuum pump while I went to another job, the temperature has risen from the 50s. We're now in the 61 degree area right now. And this is what it looks like. Now a snapshot of this will go to my customer's invoice and it'll go into our documents. Uh, if there's any discrepancy of what a customer says, well, it wasn't operating when I left your shop uh, or you know, it wasn't operating well you actually have live readings of all the temperatures or pressures that will be snapshot and go to a report that will actually go to oh actually this one won't i have no internet connection on this one you can't see what i could see on my phone or the report that it makes out but basically it'll have everything in there uh, you know your humidity your temperature your air inlet temperature your high side low side lines the temperature your sub cooling your superheat and uh, the actual temperature of this line right here the section line coming out is 41 degrees the temperature of the line that is the liquid line right here for the sub cooling is at 114 degrees so all this kind of this data will go into your sales receipt to your customer and if it came in running you could perform the test when a customer comes in when they complain about a cooling problem or they just want a service so you can show say let's say their air supply out of their dash was coming out at 53 degrees or 58 degrees then you performed your AC service and diagnostic and when you were finished it was doing 48 degrees. So you can actually show them a before and after and an improvement that they paid for. Unlike some shops, like while I was here doing this, uh, another shop came to this business and said, hey, I've never seen a vacuum pump like that. And why do you only have one hose? I've never seen a hose like that if you've seen my other videos. So the shop owner was asking, uh, what's that gauge that I had here? Remember, I had the micron gauge hooked up right here, and I told him it's a micron gauge, and of course I got the answer, what's a micron? <laughs> and uh, he says they do AC at their place. Uh, and then we're talking a little bit, and uh, he says, oh, it only takes like five minutes. You just bring it down to like 29, and then you just fill it up. Well, right there, you know you're dealing with someone you would not want to take your car to. 29 inches of mercury means absolutely nothing under a vacuum. You want to, and especially if you're just bringing it there, stopping and filling it up, that is definitely a shop that you don't want because any contaminants or any moisture or air left in your system 
will still be there after they're done if they just finished opening it up and servicing and changing it apart and you just pull the vacuum to 29 and then fill that's where problems start they won't happen right away it's kind of a long ticking time bomb kind of thing so that's it just showing you um, a alternative way of charging a system and documenting your before and after so you have proof to your customer and like I get I get a lot of shops who don't charge up systems properly and they've gone back two or three times and they got fed up they go to another mechanic and if he calls me in I take a reading before to prove exactly what they did wrong and what the readings were coming directly from their shop after they were charged up I usually do I do a um, refrigerant analyze test and I actually analyze the refrigerant with my refrigerant analyzer and usually I find it contaminated with high percentage of air or maybe another gas and then I recover it out and weigh it as it covers out recovers out and usually I'll find it a couple ounces too low or a couple ounces overcharged which will cause performance problems and uh, but they always say oh but I have this five thousand dollar machine and it does everything I go well no not all the time it doesn't do everything all right that's it guys see you on the next one. Oh yeah there's a lot of glare here just realized I promise I think when I get my next tablet I'll get one with that the anti-glare if I can because this one really sucks when it comes to uh, being outside all right see you guys